Hi, in this tutorial we're going to talk about making new routes using the Network Analyst tool. Sometimes you hear the term traveling salesman problem. I have a set of points and I want to visit as many as possible in the least possible time or the least possible distance. This is why it's called the traveling salesman problem. We don't want to waste ga gas, time, resources, or whatever. And I'm going to build upon some of the things that I'm doing with global food security. We're studying an area in southeast North Carolina where we went and field verified a number of food locations and we wanted to drive around all of this 11 county area as efficiently as possible. And we're going to go through part of that problem the way that we did this. Now you can see here in my right I have my QA QC database that we're looking at right here and I've already gone through the trouble of creating the network data set. In my previous tutorial called uh, Network Analyst Create Service Area, I talk about the process of creating this network data set. Remember that it needs to be within a feature data set. So I'm going to just drag this over to my toolbar right here. It says, do you want to add all features that participate in the network data set? Of course I do. And you can see what I have here. So I've got my junk, uh, my transportation junction, jun uh, junctions right here. I've got the edges created out as a result of it. And this is actually the original uh, data set that I have right here. Okay? And if I open up the attribute table, you can see all of the roads here that participate in this network data set. This is an 11 county area in southeast North Carolina. It also includes a 20 mile buffer. If I go all the way over to the right here, I have a column here that represents minutes. I have a column that represents miles. That's going to be very important. Okay, It's very important that I have a minutes and miles. I'm not that much of an expert with network data sets, so I don't know how to generate these on the fly, so I create these in my original data set before I do this. Now, if I right mouse click here, I can create the miles. I can create a column called miles, and I can open up a editor toolbar right here. I'm going to open up my editor toolbar. If I right mouse click, I can do something called calculate geometry. Since I'm working in state plane feet, it's fairly easy to do. And for each of these, you know, 160,000, uh, 167,000 features, I can just create miles. Okay. I also have a column here called speed limit here. Okay. So you can see I got speed limit 30. I've got speed limit 50. Basically, I can create a column using my attribute editor. I can add a new attribute and then calculate that using the formula distance equals rate times time. And then basically it's going to be time equals distance divided by rate within the confines of this attribute table. It's just going to be miles divided by speed limit. Multiply the whole thing times 60 because I don't care about hours. I care about minutes. And while I'm here, I'm going to stop the editor so I don't mess anything up. So I need a column called miles, minutes, and I need speed limit just so I can derive my minutes. Okay? And that's how I generated my network data set. If you have to go back and recalculate these, you're probably, I would strongly suggest, going back and recalculating the entire network data set. It's not that hard to do. Just a little time, you know, takes up a little time in order to do that on the front end of things. But you notice here for something, if I sort descending here, um, I'm sorting a lot of things here. But you'll see if it's speed limit 30, okay, the miles is going to be exactly half the minutes. Okay. Now also keep in mind here, if you happen to have any blanks in here, don't fill them in with values of 1 or 100 or anything like that. You might need to go over and look at the highway type okay, and check that out. So if you see if it's a U.S. highway, you might, might, you might want to make that a speed limit 50 or interstate 60 or a local road 30 or 25. Because if you just put in junk in there, if you put in a no data, remember computers are stupid. They're going to do whatever you want, especially if you have that rate or that speed limit in the denominator and nothing's there. It's going to blow up your attribute calculation. Okay. So with that, okay, I created my group, couple groups of QAQC, and these are just randomly selected, uh, randomly selected points that I want to go and field verify essentially. We're doing a project where we're looking at the relative distances between good food, bad food, limited service restaurants, fast food, grocery stores, farmer markets, and we can't check out all few thousand of them. So we took a sampling of those and we 
basically we created 100 points and we created two sets of 100 points i think one was 49 and one was 51 or whatever based on the counties they were in we sent a couple of groups out there to look at this and what we wanted to do was figure out a way that we could visit all points and verify these to make sure they existed to make sure the NAICS codes were right and check out any other information on these so we can go back and report so we look at errors of omission and perhaps probably in this case errors of commission to see of these 100 points how many of them were actually working how many of those were we said that it was a farmer's market but it really wasn't a farmer's market or a grocery store and it was something different okay and we will report these so if you see this, there, these are my points here, and these are just the randomly selected points that I have here, and I'll make these a little bit bigger, these red points here. And basically, I'm going to send a group out, or we already did, we sent a group out so we could visit these 100 points right here. Now, when I open up my network analyst, I can create a new route. And you can see the route right here. I've got stops, I've got point barriers, routes, okay? Right here, just to the right of Network Analyst, I'm going to open up my Network Analyst window, and I'm going to drag it over here, and I can look at the properties. I've got the stops right here. In my stops, I'm basically going to load in all these points called QAQC Group 1. This is the first set of 49 points that we're going to visit. So I'm going to click Load Locations, QAQC, Group 1, sure. And it's just going to load it in by the order of the FID. And we had some students go through and accumulate this list from you know, a different portion of you know, farmers markets and grocery stores based on the total proportion that we had within our entire data sets, which was on the order of thousands. Okay, you know, high hundreds to you know, low thousands, a couple thousand within the entire data set in the 20 mile buffer. So these are the places that we're going to visit here. And even if I open up this attribute table right here, you can see the 49 that we were actually going to visit here. We just brought these in using the object ID. You can see the town they live in. You can see the NAICS codes right here. Um, if we get some insight of the sales volume and employee size or whatever, you can see the type of markets and the type of type of features that we're looking at. Urban markets, rural markets, urban convenience stores, rural convenience stores. We've kind of divvied those up based on their relationship to population density and urban areas versus these, um, you know, the NAICS codes that we're looking at over here. Okay, but what we want to do here for the sake of this is just go and visit a, figure out a way to best visit these 100 points, uh, in this case, these 49 points. So you can see right here, okay, I've got the root properties. Okay, so you can see here when I open up the network analyst window right next to right next to the network analyst drop down, I've got a network analyst toolbar, and then right next to that, I'm going to click on my root properties here. Okay, my root properties here, and I've got a couple things that I can look at. One is accumulation. I can click on the miles and minutes. So if I act, as I go through this route, it tells me how long it takes me to get to each route. So if I have students out there field verifying it and they tell me, you know, hey, I was gone for two days and my route accumulation attribute tells me, you know, it should have only been out there for four hours. We can kind of work through that. The analysis setting, say, um, has used time windows and start times. I'm not, I don't care too much about those, but I want to reorder the stops to find the optimal route. Okay, Because remember, I brought these in using the FID code. So I just, am I going to go to one, two, three, four, based on the FID code that it was loaded? That's going to be very inefficient. The first time I ran it, I did this, and it told me it was going to take like, you know, hundreds of hours to do because it's going across the county. It says prefer, uh, preserve first stop, preserve last stop. I brought in FID1, and I can change these. Okay, I'm just showing you a, a background of some of the things that we can do. So we can actually go through and change these actual stops. Um, based on the order, we can change the order of those to make some of these number one where I'm going to be coming in down from Durham or wherever you're coming in from. So there, there's a lot of things that you can play with here. Um, and I'm going to click apply. So make sure you click on reorder stops. I'm going to preserve the first stop. Um, I'm going to click apply. I'm going to click OK. And then I've got a couple other buttons here, network location toolbar, move location. So if I want to change the order around of what's going to be my first and my last, I can do that here. But for now, I'm just going to click on self. 
Okay? And it's go, as it's going through and doing this, it's looking at the cumulative time amongst all of these routes. This is an extremely powerful tool here. I find this very, very interesting here. And here it is. Okay, this is my most efficient route here, starting at location one. If I zoom in all the way up here, you can see location one and location two are literally like right next to each other. I zoom out, it tells me what stop three, stop four, stop five, and what the most efficient route's gonna be. I'm gonna show you a couple of caveats to this too. So if I open up my stops right here, if I right mouse click, I can open up my attribute table. And now this is the new attribute table for the stops here. Okay, so it gives me the cumulative time right here. Let me open this up again. Gives me the cumulative time right here. Okay, attribute, cumulative minutes, cumulative miles. The important thing that we want to look at is the sequence. Because remember, we brought in this FID and you can see I said object ID 1 is going to be the first one. And then from there, we kind of move to the most efficient, most efficient based on this TSP, traveling salesman problem. So you can see after the first route, it's only going to take me 0.15 minutes. You saw how they're literally right next to each other. And it's going to take seconds to get to the next one, eight minutes to get to the next one, 35. So in the first hour, I would expect my students to do these first five or six of these. And you can see how long it takes for, to get my cumulative minutes and my cumulative miles, okay? uh, cumulative miles and my cumulative uh, minutes. So down at the bottom here, I can see for these to visit these 49 or so, it'll take me about 545 minutes or so to visit all of these. Okay, and then I've got this sequence here. So some of the things that I can do is I can export these object IDs and I can join these with this attribute table. So now I can join my object ID with my stops. So I can get a nice combination of my stop, my cumulative minutes, as well as the actual name of the store and all the attribute information collected about that. Okay. So I can join these two together using my object ID. So I can see exactly what it's at, the names that are attached to that. So there's a couple of different keys that I have there using this sequence, okay, which is very powerful. Uh, last thing we can look at too, and if, when you open up these attribute table, remember you can always save this attribute table. You can always export these points. Okay, so remember, open, right mouse click, we can export these data to a layer. Um, we can open up the attribute ta table and export this table that can be just easily joined to my QAQC uh, original um, NAICS code data. Okay, so I've got a lot of possibilities here. You can see the route that I have right here that I've created. There's only one route. If I open up the attribute table here, you can see the total takes 545 minutes over 378 miles. That's my most efficient route because you can think of all the different permutations that I can do right here. The last thing that we'll look at is directions. So if I click on the directions button, and remember when you create the network data set, over here in your featured data set, when you create this network data set, make sure you specify that you turn directions on. If you don't turn on the directions, then it won't be able to create these. And then as you see this turning the directions on here, these are my directions for all this. You know, my total distance of 378 miles, a little over nine, um, little over nine hours. I can print uh, print these, and I think I think there's somewhere that I can export these to a text file. So you can bring these out into the field and do what you want with this. So in conclusion, this is a really powerful set of tools so that you can do the traveling salesman problem. You can see I did a sample example here with just 49 points. You can see location 42 was my last point, and I specified that location number one was going to be my first point. I can export these, I can join these, and I can export these maps out. So this is a powerful set of tools so that we can do field verification, QAQC, so we can save our time, money, and resources when we go out and field verify material.